Yeah. We're going to segue now to tomatoes because that's also something gr- very great to have in our yards. And the king of tomatoes is here. Steve, thanks for being here. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. So you are, how did you get to be so famous about your growing tomatoes and your grafting of tomatoes? Jeez, I don't know if I'm that famous. Um, I've only been doing this for about 30 years now. Well, the so. only, yeah. And I've been doing a lot of lectures and talks. Uh, I think that's where my forte comes in, where I think my popularity comes in. Yeah. I've been doing that for almost uh, 25 years, so... You know, with the following that I develop by the talks that I do, you know, obviously a lot of people know who I am. Mm-hmm. And and what is your favorite tomato right now? Well, a that's a loaded question, isn't it? Because well, I love them all. I know you. There's do. only five thousand categorized categorized <laughs> variety of tomatoes. Um, I, actually, my favorite one is called Momotaro. M O M O T A R O. Momotaro. Momotaro. It's a Japanese tomato, and it's not an heirloom. You know, I think I'm the heirloom king, but. Um, this was a tomato that was hybridized in Japan. It took about 12 years for de- development. And it has, if you tasted it, it has the sugar, the best sugar to acid ratio. Uh, so it, in other words, if when, I, when you're looking at or talking or tasting tomatoes, mm-hmm. uh, we'll, if you come to one of my events, we'll go ahead and slice up 10 tomatoes. We'll slice, slice up a momotaro. I'll give it to you. You'll taste it, savor the flavor, notice its distinctiveness, and then I'll blindfold you and make you go choose. And then once you actually come to it, you'll stop. It's that good and that distinctive. So you must be eating tomatoes year-round. Uh, only if I can grow them year-round, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I don't want to say that because people find out where I live. And... <laughs> what would you suggest people try um, in, the, in the next week or so? Oh, there are so many different varieties available. Mm-hmm. Just off the top of my head, you know, if you just like a regular red tomato, uh, Abraham Lincoln has always been a very, very classy, uh, great tomato. Uh, brandy wine as an heirloom oh, is yeah. really good. Uh, recently, there's some hybridized variety varieties of brandy wine called Brandy Boy, which is a uh, better boy brandy wine cross. Uh, I think it was developed by Burpee Seeds. Uh, those are fabulous, flat, fabulous varieties. Uh, but if you like, if you like to mix them up and try different varieties, uh, pineapple is one of my favorite ones. Pineapple mm. is a bicolor. Uh, if you don't know what a bicolor is, uh, it's basically a one-pound tomato that has an orange or a yellow body to it with blotches of orange, red, and pink running through it. When you slice it open, these veins actually have these colors, and they have a very, very high sugar content. Neat. Uh, uh, another f- uh, favorite high sugar content tomato is Sun Gold Cherry. It has such a high sugar content that a lot of my customers physically buy it, pull a cherry off the vine, and they find out within a half hour or so it'll explode. So how would milkweed that we were just talking about with the Monarch Garden work as growing, mingling with tomatoes? Well, I don't see that there any problem yeah. whatsoever, yeah. That would kind of help? I mean, because I'm always, I'm always fighting that, that horned worm, you know what I mean? Well, the horned worm? Yeah. Yeah, the one that's built by Boeing? <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of like Jurassic Park, actually. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> what is your secret to keeping that guy away from eating your tomatoes? There is a, a recent development, and within the last four years, there's a new organic product called Spinosad. S P I N O S A D, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's physically the waste product of the sugarcane industry, and uh, it's a stomach poison. They figured out a way to actually process this sugarcane waste and turn it into a product that will kill the the uh, the hornworm. Not only hornworms, it'll actually take care of a lot of different caterpillars. And I know we have David sitting here, so I don't want to. It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt the monarch. It sure cat- will. Oh, would it? Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Familiar with the hornworm? Oh. Yeah. I, I kind of have to. <clears throat> Let me turn your microphone on. Go ahead. David. Okay. No, I, I'm really familiar with the hornworm. You, ha- you can't look and help marvel at that guy, how big he gets oh, I know. in the horn. And he kind of rears up. It almost feels he, like oh, he's going to bite you. Absolutely. I mean, we've always let him around just because <laughs> it, we, we're kind of almost scared to move him. But know? unfortunately, yeah. this spinosa, it has, it's very broad-spectrum kill. It'll kill any larvae, any kind of caterpillar. Mm, so. I see. Well, then maybe you wouldn't want to have the monarch. Well, but I'll tell Steve, just on a, from an organic grower, because I've been growing tomatoes for years, I have more problems with pincher bugs. Oh, pincher bugs. That come up on to the mm-hmm. flower but and, and eat the flowers off. I mean, that's my problem. Well, you my know, the, and... the spinosa will actually take care of the pincher bug uh, quite <laughs> rapidly. Uh, it kills anything with a chewing or a rasping mouth part. Yeah. And we find that at any Oh, sure. Nursery yeah, or, Monterey, yeah. Greenlight, uh, yeah. they all produce, yeah. okay. all produce that product. And tell everybody your website, Steve Gatto. My website is www.gotomatoes.us.com. Gotomato.us.com. Right. All right. Thank you, Steve. Uh, stick around a few more minutes. We're going to segue into more of the great things that are happening as we figure out ways to make those spaces you call home more beautiful on the inside and the outside. Cindy Dole, Home Wizards, our number is 888 KFWB 980 and we're back in just a bit.
Yeah, we got the look because that's what we try to help you do here. The show's called Home Wizard, Cindy Dole. And check out the website. I now have an app. Hello, CindyDole.com. All you do is you use your smartphone and get one of those uh, barcodes downloaded onto your phone. And then you wave it across my website on the app thing. And then you can take the shows with you and listen to the great interviews that we just had with David Snow talking about how, how to have your monarch butterfly garden or what Steve Goto has been telling us, uh, Gatto, about uh, having great tomatoes. In fact, Steve is still here to give us a few more tidbits, Steve. Thank Thank you, Mr. King of Tomatoes. How how kind of how what kind of a, a soil and what kind of a, a light situation do we need to really be successful as a tomato grower? Because I mean, basically, uh, if you're using a peat moss based soil, it's usually the best for either in the soil or in the container. Okay. And so, a lot of the potting soils uh, that I've been looking at on looking or uh, seeing on the market right now that are pretty recent actually have a pretty good base of peat moss in it. Uh, one of my favorite, though, has... So better uh, drainage is what you're saying. Much better drainage. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is you need uh, a water retention as well as good aeration in the soil also at the same time. If you have a lot of water retention, sometimes it actually forces a lot of the oxygen out of the soil. Uh -huh. So that might, be not, might not be the best uh, uh, soil to use for growing tomatoes. But recently they've actually started mixing peat moss with a product called coconut core. Mm -hmm. And those products really accelerate the growth of the plant. Those are really fabulous products. Are you a fan of these upside down tomatoes? Oh, that's a. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that question. Um, I mean, you see them everywhere. It kind of, it kind of feels gimmicky, <clears throat> but then you hear a lot of success stories. Too. I think there's a lot of people out there that are actually truly disappointed with those really? upside down tomatoes. Yeah, and you know they work fine. They work great. The problem is that there are two major categories in tomatoes. There's indeterminate plants, which are large plants with large root systems. Then there are determinate plants that are smaller plants with smaller root systems. If you identify the correct plant, determinate varieties obviously, for that small uh, amount of soil that the container carries, you're, you're fine with topsy-turvy. Okay. That's really basically it. You know, I think everybody's trying to put a... A, a plant with a, a size nine shoe, a, a size nine uh -huh. foot into a size seven shoe. So you need the soil volume. Okay. Smaller root system, smaller soil volume. I've also seen, in fact, it was at a showcase house a couple of years ago, uh, the use of, of a trellis and uh -huh. growing tomatoes, you know, as a vertical plant. Uh -huh. I mean, because it is going vertical anyway, but uh -huh. it just went really vertical uh -huh. and it was attractive and, I mean, they were huge. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's not a problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these indeterminate varieties can grow up to 20 feet long. Wow. Yeah, so I don't see a problem with that. If you can have several plants in that area, you can really make a really nice design out of the tomato plant. And for sun sunlight, how many hours you think? It's kind uh, of seven the hours. The most Six? the most sunlight or more the more sunlight the better. The better. Uh, eight to ten hours for larger fruiting varieties. Oh and wow! As low as six hours maximum for the smaller fruiting or cherry varieties. And they also have varieties called Siberian varieties that obviously come from Siberia area of the world. So, the to so if the tomato itself is a smaller fruit, right, it isn't going to need as much sun as the larger one. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no. Seriously, yeah. The, the shorter the daylight hours, the smaller the fruit. Uh -huh. That's basically how I teach it at the, at the events. Where are your classes, by the way? And all over Southern California, all over. all over Northern California, all over Washington and Oregon. And so if we're just beginning to learn how to be a tomato grower, we can take these classes and, and get smart and... Yeah, it's a basic tomato 101 class, but what I try to do is uh, I expand upon it throughout the year. You know, once you come to my class, you get my email address and my, my website information. Um, generally, if you have any issues during the course of the season, you're always more than welcome to email me. I'll hold your hand and, and try to figure out exactly what your issue could be mm -hmm. and then help you out of that issue. And if your plant's dying, call me, and I'll be more than happy to do that over the phone. <laughs> so you provide therapy is what you're uh, saying. Therapy, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> doctor's in. All right. Well, thanks again, Steve uh, Gatto. And tell everybody your website one more time. It's www.gotomato.us.com. And that's where you have all the listing of your classes. Exactly. And all that exactly, all right. yeah. Thank you, Steve. All right. Well, let's segue to another one of my FOCs, a friend of Cindy.